team like we just started the year. We're now joined by Baylor running backs coach Keenan Hall with Craig Smoke and David Smoke on 365 Sports. We've had Jake Spavital and others. Um, and and Keenan, it was like last week they were talking about you had been on the road and you really hadn't even been in front of the team. The players you have now, are, are you all now getting a little bit more accustomed to who you actually have in your room? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're getting acquainted. Uh, once, and thank you, uh, David and Craig, for having me on. Uh, it's, a, it's an honor and a privilege and a pleasure to be here. Uh, but, yeah, we're getting acquainted with those guys. I think we're building a solid bond. I've met all of them individually, and uh, we've been able to have a few meetings and uh, a few uh, walk-through meetings on the field. But, uh, yes, we've been able to get around the guys just a little bit, just start building that relationship. Coach, where do you start with that? I would imagine you, you take the job and, and you start to look at the roster, but how how do you kind of go about what's your process in, in entering a new room with a new team and a new group of players? First and foremost, I think uh, it's, it's the relationship piece. You know, you got to, as, as fast as you can, try to develop some kind of relationship with the players and their family. So that's my approach. You know, I'm a big relationship guy. I'm big on relationships. So for me, in order for, I think, in order for a guy like a Richard Reese or a Dome Richardson who've had success in the Big 12, in order for them to trust me and play hard for me, I think we have to have a real close-knit relationship. So that's how I start. You know, I come in and I have an individual meeting with each guy and just let them know what the expectations are and what we're looking for and what we're trying to do uh, going forward and just trying to breathe, in, uh, breathe some confidence into them knowing that, you know, at the same time I'm new, and, uh, you know, I'm coach, but at the same time, I know I have to earn and uh, earn your trust and earn your respect. You know what I mean? And I'm going to make sure I do my part on that. And I, as long as you guys meet me halfway, then we can get that done. Keenan, uh, you have been in the business a while. By the way, your alma mater is South Oak Cliff. They've become pretty much a powerhouse with Coach Todd, and you know that with what they're doing. But so when you recruit a player, it's to a program. It's also for a head coach, but it's also for the person who's recruiting him, which in this case is Keenan Hall. How does that all mix together? And obviously you've now moved down to Waco. How do you handle all of that and juggling those different angles? Um, I think you, at, at the end of the day, yeah, you, you're selling the university and you're selling the head coach, but ultimately you sell yourself as well. You know, uh, I have a pretty good reputation of, you know, building a relationship with kids and, you know, kids that don't even come play for me, you know, I have a great relationship with them uh, even after they don't play for me. So I got guys like Marcus Trice who, you know, was going to come play for me at Illinois State and didn't. And, you know, we to this day, you know, I, I, I picked up I picked up the phone for him and when he needed advice and stuff. So, you know, even like Erica, uh, Erica Moko, who just left the program, uh, took a job. You know, I recruited both him and his brother, Stephen Moko, out of Oregon. And he didn't know long, you know, he, Eric chose not to come, but Steven did, but I have a just the same relationship with Steven that I do with Eric. So it's more so just a relationship piece, selling yourself and building a true, real relationship. So like I said, for me, it's all about relationships and just building that. And the kids know you care about them. The kids know that you want the best for them. The kids know that you're going to have their back. So that's more so my recruiting approach. When I recruit kids, of course, I sell the program. Of course, I, you know, sell the head coach, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, I build the individual relationship with him that's going to last long after football. Dave Aranda, uh, this is going to be his fifth year. They've had ups and they've had downs. What did he tell you? Uh, what did he tell you why he needed you at Baylor? Well, he told me, you know, obviously I'm from the Dallas Metroplex, but he, 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 he continued to just preach to me that the impact I can make on the roster, uh, the impact I can make on the program, uh, that he believed in me. He's been watching me for some time and watching me for some years. And it was, it was Coach around and then Coach Spravitar. Coach Spravitar has known me for a while through some people. But he just, he just you know, endured confidence in me that I can help flip the roster. You know, I can help get us back into the Dallas market, which, you know, that's where I'm born and raised and have all the relationships. So that was the biggest thing, just, you know, preaching how I can help the team. You know, I'm a, I'm a guy that, I'm very unselfish. I, I think, you know, Coach Aranda's done an unbelievable job building a great foundation uh, in the Dallas market. But, you know, I know, uh, like I spoke to uh, that Coach McGuire and 
Coast Juice, who's from the area, kind of moved on, and mm -hmm. they no longer had a presence, uh, someone that can go in and have those relationships in the area. So I think that was the big piece of having someone that, you know, have played with or coached with or, you know, played against some of these coaches uh, in that area that, you know, when I walk in a room, you know, I, I have a different relationship with them. It's more personable relationship, and they know my reputation. They know who I am. They know, you know my heart. And they know that, you know, I put kids first and they know that I'm going to do right by their uh, student athletes. So that was kind of the, the, the talk we had is, you know, just the impact I can make on improving the roster. So, Keenan, that says a lot when people see you wearing that logo because of all the things that you mentioned and, and who they know you are and, and the belief that they have in you that you're making the decision to be at Baylor. What kind of a response have you gotten walking through the halls, having that BU or that green and gold on? What's kind of the perception that you picked up uh, so far just in terms of how young people are viewing Baylor and just the opportunities that you have to pitch them as well about coming down to Waco? It's been excitement, you know, it's been excitement. Uh, like I told those guys, you know, you know, when I walk in and talk to Coach Todd and Coach Samples and, and guys like that and, and Coach Mathis, you know, at the Soto that, you know, they're excited for me. They've been they've been knowing me since I was a little boy. So they're excited for me. You know, they want to see me do great things. They believe this is a great opportunity for me. Uh, and I thought so as well. So the ability to just walk in the room, being in the Big 12, at a prestigious program like B, about like, like Baylor, a national program, I think it, it it helps us a lot. I think we have a brand. I think we got a brand that's very popular that can sell, and I think kids are excited about it in the Dallas Metroplex, and and I think they're gonna you know take us pretty serious when we come down. We have some big time talent come down already, so I think the kid the 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 reception we're getting right now. Uh, from the Dallas Metroplex has been great, you know, and it's a lot of excitement right now. Keaton, I, I I know that you, I mentioned South Low Cliff and Craig brought up some of the schools, but there's always been a lot of fantastic programs in the DFW area. But do you think right now, like the last five or eight years, what's happening in that one part when you cross over either 20 or 30, whatever it is, uh, it's 20, and you see all of the schools around you. Has it ever been more dominant than it is right now in that area in high school football? No, it has not. No, it has not. I know there's times when DeSoto and Carter, I mean, Cedar Hill and Carter was pretty good. But mm -hmm. to have the talent that we have, you know, you when you go down the whole strip, you're talking Cedar Hill and you're talking about, you know, the Met, uh, Mansfield schools. And then you talk about the Soto High School. And then you got Lancaster High School, and then you got this, uh, then you got Duncanville, and then you have Sox. So it's like you know the the looks of talent, the the dominance that they're showing right now. Is, I don't think it's ever been like this. Even when I was in school, uh, I thought we were pretty good, but <laughs> no. <laughs> but it's it's a, it's on a different level right now. And and, and kudos and, and to those those head coaches for building their program, building their programs the right way. Because I know those men. You know, they're all about toughness. They're all about character. They're always about doing it the right way and discipline. So, I mean, I love them for how they are raising, you know, those young men coming out those areas. So, Coach, you talked a lot about the, the building relationship part and how important that is. Football school's going on or it got started last week. Can you kind of take us through that process and what you're actually allowed to do? But also, outside of the relationship part, what are you, I guess, trying to drill home maybe in guys' heads about your approach or just football things? What's kind of the early messages you're trying to, to drill into guys during this uh, portion? The early message for us is just becoming a brotherhood, you know, knowing that, you know, at the end of the day, Coach Hall is going to have your back, that we're in this together, that we're a family, uh, just getting to know them, building that that rapport. You know, uh, the football stuff is going to take care of itself. Like I said, if you don't have a relationship with these young men, they're not going to do what you need them to do for you. So the biggest focus has been building a relationship, just meeting with them one-on-one, -on -one, making sure, you know, we have our text thread, that we, you know, we build a relationship um, and just continue to do it that way. You know, when we're in the meetings and stuff, I know, Coach Pavlikar, as you know, is one of the brightest offensive minds in college football that, you know, being able to just teach them the scheme and being able to watch film of uh, Coach Pavlikar's scheme and just going showing them how they're going to be able to excel in this offense. So I think we're exuding confidence in them, showing them that they have a great chance to be very special in this offense and then just going out and be able to walk through these things and where they can see that, 
you know, what is translated from the meeting room to the film that they're going to be able to have a crazy, uh, amazing impact on this offense. I think it's going to be an uh, explosive offense. And I think they know that as well. And I think they don't, they're going to have a great year. So it's still just a relationship piece. That's what I'm building right now. Because like I said, if I don't have their trust, that I don't have their respect, then I don't think we're going to be as successful as uh, we all think. As far as y'all's on-field plan, us to working through what this new offense is, is going to be exactly, but what uh, in those conversations with Jake Spavital and, and even to a lesser extent Dave Aranda, what have they, I guess, said that they want out of that running back room specifically? Uh, they haven't really said they just want consistency. Okay. You know, they want yeah. guys that are going to show up every day be the same guys every day and just consistency. They want guys that's going to be explosive, that's going to run hard, that's going to, you know, be tough guys that show up every day, be consistent, and do the right things on and off the field. That's really, pretty much been the message. You know, obviously we're going to we're going to be a we're going to be really strong in the trenches, tough, tough in the trenches, and get north and south. And that's kind of our mindset. We want guys that's going to get north and south, guys that's going to get those tough yards, and then the big play is going to come. You know, and coach the offense. It's usually we always have the advantage in numbers. So if we keep doing the same thing, you know, right, and do it the same way every time, I think those opportunities as far as being explosive in this offense is going to come. But they just got to be consistent and, uh, you know, showing up every day, you know. Keenan, I know that uh, you mentioned the relationship. You cannot s- speak to anything, a player particularly, but you also not only have built – a relationship or a bond in Dallas, but also into the East Texas area. How and I that's where Craig and I lived a long, long time. So we know what's yeah. out there and the talent that's out there. How important is it that that is with uh what Jared Anderson's gonna be out there and he's been there before. How critical of a base is that too? It's a it's a it's a critical base. You know, East Texas football man, you you get you get some of those kids, they're some of the tough, the toughest kids, the most disciplined kids, hardworking kids that you'll ever meet. You know what I mean? So us being able to get out there and build those relationships, Coach Anderson has done an unbelievable job in his career, in his 25-year career on building those relationships, and he has great relationships. Um, you know, I have some relationships over my time being at Illinois State, so I recruited the whole state. So I have my own, you know, kind of personal relationships out there in East Texas. And, you know, my family's from East Texas, my you know, my dad's side of the family's from out there in Henderson. So I have roots out there, whereas I can come in there and be myself and build those relationships. You know, one thing about me, you know, this is not an overnight thing. You know, I've been coaching for 15 years now. So that's how I've been going out to East Texas for 15 years. I've been going in the, in the Metro place. And then, like I said, a lot of these coaches I either played against or coached against uh, or, you know, played with. So I have a lot of deeper ties and relationships when it comes to the high school football coaches uh, in, 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 the, in the Texas High School Coaching Association. So um, it's, it's all about relationships. You know, it, it has to be about it, you know, and that's where it starts. I know things are getting kind of crazy mm-hmm. uh, with all this other stuff, but if you don't have a firm relationship with the kids, the parents, the coaches, and then, you know, you're really not going to get anywhere, you know. So what? It's, it's, it's definitely – a good spot out there in Texas for it. Where are you more competitive, if you don't mind me asking, as a player, and I know your career was cut short because of an injury, were you more competitive as a player or more competitive as someone recruiting a player? Uh, <laughs> I was pretty competitive as a player. But I, I think I'm even more competitive, you know, as a, as a coach and a recruiter. You know, because I'm I'm really uh, I come from very humble beginnings. Uh, I've had to work extremely hard to get where I'm at. I come from absolutely nothing. So I think by being a coach in this industry and being where I'm at, I have a chip on my shoulder and I have something to prove every day that I wake up. I think I'm more competitive, you know, as a coach, you know, and a recruiter. You know, I, I really take pride in, you know, being able to pour into these kids and being – you know, a guy that can navigate and help them, you know, mold their life to where they're trying to go. You know, a lot of these kids that I'm recruiting, I was them. I was, you know, them, you know, 20 years ago. So they can look at me and be that, I can be that example for them to show them that, hey, as long as you stick to it and, and you stay the course, that things can, things going to be able to, you know, get figured out for you. So 
I think being a uh, being a recruiter, I'm, I think I'm more competitive as a recruiter because, you know, I can really be myself and be genuine. And these kids know that I'm really going to pour into them, that I really care about them, that I really love them, and I really want them to be successful, and I want to help them get there. All right, last thing. You, again, will have spring drills around the corner. How important – or how can you wait? Are you an X's and O's guy? Uh, obviously recruiting. Uh, the practice time, huge game prep, all of that as a coach. Can you almost like, are you biting at the bit, bit to get them on the field and see what some of your guys can do? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm a big X's and O's guy. Uh, I know sometimes we get the knock for being elite recruiters that we're not good at, you know, as X's and O's. And I think that's where, I know I might separate myself than a lot of people out here in the country. I think, you know, my ability to pick up offense, I've been in a few different offenses in my country, in my, in my time that, you know, I can, you know, be able to dissect it and be able to coach it and teach it, especially the way Coach Spavitar wanted to talk. So for me, uh, I'm excited. We've been jumping a bit. I'm excited. So when we go out for walkthroughs, I mean, we don't get to do much, but just being out there, the atmosphere, the presence, you know, just being in McLean Stadium and just feeling it, you know what I mean? Just feeling the energy from the kids. They got a great group of young men. You know, Richard Reese bringing energy every day. You know, he's a little bit laid back, but when he touched that football, you can tell that he is a dude in, in Don Richardson and Dawson, um, uh, Pendergrass, and then you got, you know, you got Jordan Jenkins, and then you also have uh, – you have uh, – Dobbs uh, coming in? Dobbs coming in, yeah, and then you have your, our our young freshman here as well. So for me, it's 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 uh it, it, it's been fun. You know, I I can't wait to get out there. I know it's gonna be a few weeks before we really able to get out there, but it, it's uh, it's pretty exciting right now. Bryson it's Washington, energy. yeah, Bryson, yeah Bryson. Bryson Washington from Franklin, who was a state championship. All right, my last thing. We've discussed all this uh, and what Spavital Aranda. But what's it like being around Dave Aranda? He's a unique character. He's a a really good football mind. Obviously, things have not always been good. It's been up and down. That's part of the game itself. But what are your thoughts about being around Dave Aranda? I mean, I I love being around him just because of the type of person he is. I think, uh, you know, he has a big heart. I think he cares about the players. I think he cares about the coaches. I think he's an ultimate competitor. That's what I've noticed a few days around him is that he is a competitor. And he's sharp as, sharp as nails. Like, he's he's a football guy. Uh, and I that's, for me, that's what I love about him. And he's, you can just tell he's an amazing leader. You know, he commands respect. He, he exudes confidence. And he just, uh, he's a really good dude. You can just tell, uh, you know, when I sat down and had my meeting with him when I was thinking about taking the, the position, it just, you know, just the type of man he is. You know, you can just tell that he he cares about you as a person, and that care that mattered to me more than anything else there is. Because I'm a people person. You know, you all want to be, you know, valued. You want to be wanted, and you want to be cared about. You know, so when he expressed those things, and we had our conversations, and I could tell just how genuine he was, and what type of man he was. That's why, you know, by by our conversation, just what I've heard about him from other people. So being around him. I've gotten gotten the same feel. Uh, you know, he's just a really good dude, but he's super competitive. Uh, I think he's. I I think it's going to be an extremely good year. I think we're going to do what we need to do to get 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 where we're trying to go. Keenan Baylor, associate head coach, running backs coach, coach. Thank you so much for your time. Good luck. Uh, uh, closing everything out. I know there's signing day coming up on Wednesday, which is not the same as it used to be, but what you've already brought to the table and what you will in the future. Thank you so much for your time. Look forward to meeting you. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys soon. Yes, sir. Keenan Hall, Baylor associate head coach, running backs coach. And, 